Welcome, this is John Highman from Commercial Real Estate Online. This is one of the many training videos that we put out for commercial real estate brokers and agents around the world. And if you haven't visited our website before, you can do so here, which is commercial-realestate-training.com. And now for this particular topic, this video today. The question is, what is your commercial real estate business plan? And that is at a personal level. I've split the topic up into three separate issues. Firstly, the struggles. In my view, without a commercial real estate business plan, as an individual, you will struggle. You'll struggle with a number of things. So here are the comments that explain that to you. Firstly, you'll have trouble with attracting listings, finding clients, getting ahead of the competition. You won't know what your targets and goals are. And of course, taking action towards improvement will be difficult because you won't know what actions are better than others. And of course, understanding the market pressures and changes, that's a constant thing. So without a business plan, you really can't see those market changes. So let's look at these struggle issues individually. Attracting listings. In my view, open listings are perhaps a great waste of time. I like to focus on exclusive listings, mainly because you can control the client, the property, the market, the inquiry and the inspections. So exclusive listings should be the preference in all respects. Certainly you may need to take open listings and they do have a purpose or a use over time. However, you can't market them extensively. You can't control them. You can't control the client in any way. And if you do happen to sell or lease an open listing, it is more of a product of luck. So your local area. In attracting listings, you should define your local area, and that is part of the business planning process. Set your local area geographically so that you have a defined number of properties, business owners, business leaders, tenants, and property developers in that region, and then drill down into that local area. Of course, as part of your business plan, you should determine your property type, your preferences when it comes to that, be it, be it uh, retail, industrial, or office type property. What is your property type? And within that, can you sell, lease and manage? Can you do all three things? Or perhaps can you sell and lease? What is your focus? And lastly, within this attracting listings category, you should focus on quality listings wherever possible because they will create more inquiry for you from the local area. And top agents generally walk away from substandard listings, mainly because they're a waste of time and take up too much of the resources of the top agent. So focus on quality listings. So let's look at some other struggle issues. Finding clients. It's always a struggle to find clients. Of course, there are different types of clients that you should service. Now, business owners are a good category to work on, firstly, because they are local. They need to do their business within that local area. And of course, they may either lease or own the property that they are located within. In saying that, a strong link occurs between business owners and property investors. Property investors provide those properties for business owners to occupy. So you can work on both categories very well, the investors and the business owners. Now, a special group here, which is separate again, and that is franchise groups. Franchise groups require properties to lease as part of their business model and their lease profile should be understood. If you're working with franchise groups, get to understand the ideal types of property, the locations, the improvements that they require as part of their lease structure. And of course, the arrangements that you have with a franchise group can extend for many years over different property types and different locations. Get to know what they require. Work with them exclusively wherever possible. Now, the other two groups that I haven't explained yet are that of accountants and solicitors. Now, accountants and solicitors have a solid client base of investors and perhaps business owners that require property to occupy or perhaps to own. So accountants and solicitors, they are worth knowing. They do require property help from time to time. And the big thing there, of course, is that they have to trust you and know that you really are an expert at what you do. When you have established that trust and, and over time uh, got inside their their client database and helped a few of their clients, you'll find that the doors will open further and you'll have a good source of business opportunity coming to you. So that is finding clients and you can get clients from this group of people. Now, getting ahead of the competition. As part of your business plan, you should always be tracking where your competition is going, what they're doing and your ratio, your, your position against those numbers of the competition. Now, your internet profile will of course be your personal profile 
uh, as it relates to the search engines so that the search engines are exposed to you and can track you down as well as the properties that you do list so the listing numbers will have relevance to signboards and also the relevance to the internet listings that you have at the moment. And I go back to the point that the listing numbers that you create should really be exclusive listings. Open listings are generally a waste of time. Perhaps you have to take open listings in the early stages of your career, but certainly move away from that as you can improve your market share, your dominance as a specialist in the industry. Now going a bit further here, presentations. Getting ahead of the competition in presentations. This says that you should have a reasonable conversion factor when it comes to your sales pitch, your listing pitch, your presentation, your proposals to, sale, to sell, to lease or to manage. Now what's your conversion rate now? Most top agents would have a conversion rate of 75% and above because they are regarded as specialists in what they do. Now perhaps in your early stages of your career, you might find that your conversion rates are below 50%. This will improve through building your relevance as a specialist in the industry and of course your ability to pitch and sell and present your proposals. Now getting ahead of the competition should always be a factor involving quality listings. You need good properties to build your market share and of course within your market, within your territory, make sure that you have got your fair share, if not better, of quality listings from that area. So let's look at number four. And again, targets and goals can be a problem without a business plan. The initial targets and goals that you should focus on should be at the front end of the relationship with your clients and prospects. By the front end, I mean making calls out, contacting new people that you haven't spoken to before, talking to them about opportunities as far as selling, leasing, developing, relocating. That's the cold calling process. And from that, you should be creating meetings. Now, numbers vary from area to area, person to person, but I should expect most agents to be making at least 40 outbound calls per day and from that creating at least two meetings per day and from that ratio, two meetings per day, they should be creating at least one new meeting, one new listing per week. Now that will change over time. The ratios uh, will change and certainly the listings created per week could lift to two or maybe three listings per week as you get known as a specialist in the industry. So let's look at another category taking action towards improvement. Our industry is something that uh, should always be improving, changing and adjusting to the, the industry trends. So you need to track and measure your progress and that is regards prospecting, inspections, negotiations, commissions and listings. Track and measure what you're doing. Monitor and review all of those things on a weekly basis so you know how you are improving. And of course, within that, you should be tracking the marketing results you're getting. That is the marketing dollars coming in the door from vendor paid marketing, as well as the results from marketing coming back to you by way of direct calls into your office or onto your mobile phone. And number three, a quarterly personal performance report. Now, that is an important document and should give you an idea of where you're heading. I say quarterly because you will be adjusting that report quite a lot as the year changes and the property market changes. Number five, understanding the pressures and the changes of the market, the market pressures. Uh, there will be ups and downs regards inquiry. Some of that is seasonal, particularly when it comes to Christmas time and certain times of the year where uh, perhaps the climate or the, the property inquiry falls due to demographics and customer activities. Uh, new developments are changing in the market all the time. Understand where the new, new developments are coming and how you can get into that market share. Prices will generally go up or perhaps they may stagnate, stagnate. Sometimes they may fall. So understand what the prices are doing. Look at the trends over the last few years as well. And rents, uh, the same thing there. Rents are determined in various ways of source, of course, gross and net rents. And they will go up and down depending on the amount of supply and demand for least space in the area today within the property type. So that is the factor of supply and demand as well. So they are the struggles that occur if you haven't got a decent business plan. So what does a good plan look like? Well, it takes a few weeks to put together. Uh, it takes considerable study. You need to know your territory, review the market trends, get to know what's going on in the market today, understand your brokerage and exactly what profile it does have in the industry today, as far as clients, customers and other competitors go, and then understand the resources that you can use as an agent to attract business to you. Now from that, let's look at the prevailing market conditions. Throughout the year, the property market changes. You need to adjust to that. Of course, that will be in leasing, sales and property management. Now, it's interesting to note that when sales are up, 
leasing is usually down. And when leasing is up, sales are usually down. From both of these activities, you can create property management leads and opportunities. Of course, property management portfolio clients give you stability of income over time as a brokerage business. So from both leasing and sales, encourage the client to move to a property management appointment if that is what they need. Now, the prevailing market conditions to track also will be the amount of inquiry coming into you on a daily and weekly basis from your marketing activities. And also you need to watch your conversions of deals to final transactions. Of course, all of these things, these prevailing market conditions help you make decisions. And when you make good decisions, you can move ahead in your market as an agent, as a broker, servicing the clients that are desirable for you. So let's look at the structure of a plan, a plan that you can implement into your commercial real estate brokerage. And that is on an individual basis. I put some categories here for you, perhaps you can add to this list, but these are the main ones. Of course, you should start with some form of mission or vision statement to say exactly what you are going to do, the market that you're going to service, and why the market should even trust you as an agent or broker. Uh, certainly something to be out there selling your services, but if the market really doesn't trust you, it's going to be a hard sell. So make sure that you have all of your bases covered when it comes to your mission and your vision statement, and that it is aligned to your ideal customers who can trust and work with you over time. Number two, define your territory geographically. Now I'm quite big on this in the sense that uh, you cannot cover a huge area, at least not initially. Split your area up into, say, 2,000 properties or perhaps 1,000 properties and then work within those groups until you have that area covered. Then move to the next one. Uh, from each group you will, or from each territory or sales patch, you will create leads and opportunities and you can go back into that territory on a cycle basis. So if you cover a group of, say, even 250 properties this month, uh, you can go back, back into that area in six months' time and cover it again. Uh, the way to win business in our industry is particularly to get back into the same territory or patch on a regular basis so that people get to know you and respect you as someone who is diligent and focused, perhaps persistent, but in a good way. So let's look at uh, reviewing and qualifying the market conditions as part of your plan structure. Look at the last 12 months. You'll need to know what's going on there regards selling and leasing the conversions of listings, the amount of commission coming out of the market, how many competitors you have at the moment. From that, you can then determine what the future three years might be like. Of course, that will be in relation to your brokerage, but also you yourself, especially in the sense that you will have certain skills uh, that are relevant to a market type. So focus on your skills. Don't try and turn yourself into something that you are not. Of course, look at the market and the client demographics that are ideal for you. If you specialize in something such as industrial property, understand where the market is and the client demog demographics that you should service. What is the future of industrial property in your city? What do you need to do to get further into that future? Of course, the town or city changes will occur from time to time, and that will also involve roadways, new developments, properties becoming redundant, a vacant land being developed. All of those changes should be tracked through the planning office at your local council or municipal office. Now, number four, what is your property speciality? I won't spend a lot of time on this, but it's a question worth asking. Are you a retail specialist, an industrial specialist, or an office specialist? Once you know, you should drill down into that exclusively so that you can talk about all the variations of rental, selling, uh, the opportunities of new business, how to create a good marketing campaign in that property type, how to create inquiry and inspections. And of course, what services should you offer? That will be geared to the previous point. But in services, you should be offering selling and leasing services yourself personally because they both go hand in hand. A lease transaction today will be a sales opportunity in the future. And of course, from both of those, you can create a property management opportunity. So let's look at who your ideal client may be. Now, I have covered this elsewhere earlier in this particular video, but it's worth mentioning again. Business owners, they occupy the properties that you may service, be it in leasing or selling. Property investors, of course, they need tenants, and that's where the business owners come into it. Uh, developers need land and also buildings to develop, perhaps redundant buildings, perhaps vacant land, and you can work on all of that. And the franchise groups will require certain types of properties to lease or to occupy as part of their business model and expand into within your town or city. Now, the resources available within the brokerage and to you yourself and perhaps to your staff. 
Resources will vary and depending on how you are employed within your brokerage, those resources will be either self-funded through your own costs or partly funded through the brokerage. And you need to know what those resources are. Perhaps you have an administrative assistant to help you. That is a good thing. However, it needs to be paid for. So a lot depends on how those extra resources are available and how they are paid for within your business structure. Now, you should have some income targets and some strategies. Uh, define your average deal size. That is in leasing, project development, property management and sales. When you know your average deal size, you can actually work out uh, the sales by dollar unit value and the lease by dollar unit value. Then of course you can then relate to the amount of deals that you can do per year and that allows you to focus your prospecting within properties of certain size, properties of certain location and properties that will give you those average units of commission. Of course, property management is a little bit different in the sense that the commission achieved there is on a monthly basis and over time of the property management appointment. So if you are feeding property management opportunities into your brokerage, that's a good thing. And of course, you may get a slice of the action anyway, if you are a sales or leasing expert. So ask the questions. There's no harm in uh, a sales or leasing expert introducing a property management appointment to the business and getting some commission from that over the period of the first six months of the management fee. OK, let's look at the SWOT analysis. Now, we all know what SWOT is. It's strengths, weaknesses, opportunities and threats. As an individual, you will have strengths, weaknesses, opportunities and threats. Also, there'll be other issues to consider within that category. Your brokerage, the client base, the database. What strengths and weaknesses does your database have? It's an interesting question. Your knowledge, your listings, the location in which you work, the market in which you work your personal skills and your resources. Get out a piece of paper, create four columns, strengths, weaknesses, opportunities and threats. Then go through each of these, brokerage, client base, database, knowledge, listings, location, market, personal skills and resources. When you understand your strengths, you can build on them. When you, under when you understand your weaknesses, you can fix them. When you can see the opportunities, you can work on them. And when you see the threats, you move away from them. So that's your SWOT analysis. It's a very important part of a business plan. And lastly, let's look at some key performance indicators. That is part of the business plan structure, and you need to track these things throughout the year. Uh, the number of sales listings that you are creating on a regular basis, the number of leasing listings that are coming to you, and the reasons for that. Of course, a lease will, le will lead to a sales opportunity in future years. Look at the property management listings and how you obtain those property management listings. Perhaps you did a lease deal to get to that. Look at the referrals that are coming to you. Uh, good client relationships over time will produce referrals. Of course, understand how the commissions are coming to you on a monthly basis and compare that to last year. And lastly, look at your market share. And that is in controlled stock, that is exclusive listings. Open listings don't count in my view. However, you might want to count your open listings for some particular reason. Online listings are important and also look at signboards. So that is your market presence, that is your market share. So that is the end of those topics, the topics of a business plan, the structure of a plan, the mission statement, the territory geographically, market conditions, property speciality, what services you provide, your ideal client, your resources, your targets, the SWOT analysis and your KPIs. And of course, they are the factors within a real estate business plan on an individual basis for a top agent. So that's the end of this video. I hope it's helped you with some ideas to get organized and to improve your market share. If you want more tips in uh, the industry in commercial real estate today, you can visit our website, which is commercial-realestate-training.com. Thanks for listening today. This is John Highman from that website. I thank you for listening to this video and by all means subscribe to our YouTube channel so you can get more of our regular videos on an ongoing basis. Thanks for listening. I'll catch you next time.